All right, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, this video I know is probably gonna be incredibly late, um, but uh, trust me, it was worth it. I loved making it. Um, there was some uh, tough points in the build where I really didn't, I really wish that I didn't uh, wanna make an ice farm. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome uh, since it produces about 10,500 ice per hour. Um, especially if you really are using ice all the time, like I use it all the time for uh, for storage systems, um, even just item transportation, it's one of the best things, uh, and even in like the nether where you can like use boats on ice. Um, so this is actually in a creative uh, save of my survivor world, and I've pre-dug this uh, perimeter, and if you guys are wondering why it is in a perimeter, it's to help uh, reduce lag. Um, because I'm not loading the graphics of the area around me, the optimization of those uh, extra frames or even just uh, the leg optimization, that stuff can put its performance towards the massive ice, par ice farms. Uh, speaking of these farms, um, each module takes 17 minutes to do one layer and one layer or one cycle is about 576 ice, which is a crazy amount. Um, then we have uh, well these these big main modules are about five minutes. Uh, this big uh, module, which uh, takes a big brick of about four by twelve by twelve um, blocks of ice, and it sends it into one wide streams, which then can be sent to towards the player. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a extra player using Kerpa mod. Um, just make sure that I'm actually loading all the area and I'm not uh, unloading one area. So I'm just going to go player. Uh, let's go ice spawn. Oops. Uh, so this player, this uh, fake player bot will make sure that the area is loaded so I don't have to. Um, one quick thing that I do want to mention is if you are building this farm, and I will not be uh, putting a tutorial out for this, but if you are building this farm, um, you will also need a bunch of mob switches. Um, if you don't know what a mob switch is, ge what it generally is, is it uh, you spawn a bunch of mobs and then you hold them and you load them at the same time and this cancels spawning in the rest of the area. Of course, the more players that you have, um, the higher the mob cap is. Um, so if you have like two players, I think it's about 85. If you only have uh, one player, I think it's about 76, 75, somewhere in there, I completely forget. Um, but the, uh, the ones that you're going to need are going to be polar bear because polar bears can spawn on ice and if say let's see if I can find one oh no they're all full um but yeah say so let's open this up and just get some water let's say they were to spawn on the ice um what would happen oops apparently I don't know how to place blocks what would happen is um, they could very well just walk in here and then the ice wouldn't spawn in them because their bounding box, so say if I turn this on, their bounding box is taking up that spot so the ice can't um, spawn there. Um, this is, v that's a weird glitch. Um, this is very rare. Chances are it's not gonna happen. Um, but it is something that can happen and it can break the farm uh, quite dramatically. Um, especially if, okay, let's see if I can find a good example. Um, over here, uh, what I'll show you is when these fly machines come over, they actually pull down these blocks in order to make um, four 12 by 12 slices, and then we can put them into a four by 12 by 12 block. Um, but if they, but if there's no blocks that spawn, if this is just water along this line, um, uh, what would happen is we actually have some pushers here which make sure that these pistons when they're pulled down and out of the way of this uh, this main pusher um, they would actually be pulled down by these blocks because they d they can't get their their motion here you know I'll just demonstrate it it's a it's kind of a hard thing to talk about let's make sure I'm turning on the right one let's not turn on this one this one's always had issues I'll we'll just run over here we'll turn on this farm uh, I think they're both good to go. So what we can see is we have, first of all, we activate these pushers, and they just push the ice down. Um, what's nice is 
we can actually make these these uh, blocks a lot thinner um, but because we have them set to 12 stuff like this if it was lower they would be pushed down again and then when uh, the secondary pushers these guys um, activate they would actually get stuck on those ice blocks so as these get pushed over they're actually set into this weird pattern so then we have to tackle that so we send a piston uh, fly machine which just sends them back into uh, correct 12 by however many I think 48 and then we have these uh, this fly machine which pushes uh, three quarters of this row down and then that'll get pushed down and we actually have this which activates and that's what stops the uh, um, these pist or this fly machine when it comes down again so it gets pushed down activates and then it pulls it pushes everything down once more so this is about half which is getting pulled pushed down and we have some quadruple piston extenders which uh, send these back and then we have this layer down here and it pulls down that final 12 box and this is what I was talking about we actually have to push these blocks back really fast or else they get pulled down by those pistons and then they eventually get stuck and jam this fly machine uh, so then the this uh, main one pushes them over in slices of 2 by 12 by 12 um, does that twice and then that's it for the staging and then what we do is we separate this block into um, a bunch of rows of just straight up uh, I think 1 by 12. Um, so what we do is we push uh, all these ice blocks down and then we pretty much send them back and forth with self-returning fly machines. So if we can watch this again it's, it's kind of satisfying when you have the tick rate set really high. I think I've got it set to about 60 or 40, one of the two. All right, so now that's pulled back, we can see this fly machine pushes down. A bit of a visual glitch there. But what happens is these actually push. So we'll see it happen again. It's on a timer. Um, and then what happens is we send them to this conveyor belt. And then that's how they get uh, sent to, oops, uh, to the player. Um, but what we do is we actually have to we have two lines that come together, so we actually push out an extra piston, and then we take it away so we can have the uh, second line come through. They get pushed down, pushed over, and then pushed towards the player. We just have a command block actually uh, removing the blocks from the world. That way I don't have to have someone uh, breaking the blocks. Um, like I said, this entire farm, or this entire module takes about 17 minutes. Um, of course, you're going to need a mob switch. Uh, one thing I do want to qu clarify is there will be there will not be a tutorial for this farm. Um, mainly because it's such a big farm, it would be probably about four or five hours of a tutorial, um, which is mm, more time than I really want to spend. Um, and it's 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 a farm that I'm really proud of. I'm not saying that I that I would think that you guys would plagiarize it, say that it's yours, but it's something that I'm quite proud of. Um, but it's a farm. That's a lot of work, and so many different things can go wrong with it. Um, and if you're not one for troubleshooting, it would be very hard to fix, especially these fly machines. Fly machines probably one of the hardest things to have to deal with. Um, they take a lot of time to even understand the mechanics and get around the piston push um, limit. Of course, even though I'm on carpet, I'm still using the piston push limit of 12, which again makes everything a little bit more complicated. Um, but really this farm it took about 45 hours in under two weeks which is quite a marathon for a farm and I'm just I'm, I'm I don't really want to say I'm proud of it um, it's not as efficient as I would have hoped it to be um, it's efficient enough but there were a couple issues that I ran into and I just wanted to get this video out and be done with the farm so I kind of took the easy way out I, I was gonna have a much more complicated uh, system here um, uh, where you would destroy the blocks, but I had spent far too long trying to design something that didn't work, so I ended up just making this uh, incredibly si uh, simple little system, which just pushes the blocks over. It's nothing special, um, but it works for me, and in the end that's really all I need it to do. Um, but yeah, this was definitely, it was a fun farm to make, it was a hard farm to make. Um, but I've really enjoyed making it. 
Uh, I don't mean really. I'm just proud of this farm because it's actually quite smart. It's pretty much a brain that's set to do one thing over and over again. All these uh, systems are self-resetting. And even like some things that I didn't talk about, like I have to um, keep these blocks. Uh, normally for this fly machine, you need to have um, obsidian behind it. But I can't have that because when these get pushed down to do the second row, um, those observers would impede here. So what I had to do is I had to create something that pushes these pistons over and then sends these blocks down and then keeps them extended. And if you guys know or are in the technical community, you would know that um, extended pistons actually act as, um, so, or not solid, immovable blocks, which is a big game changer uh, and a big... Uh, I guess, a technical feature that a lot of people use in fly machines. Um, I really only use it there. I don't know if I use it anywhere else. Um, yeah, uh, fly machines are a pain to build. That's for, for sure. Uh, a couple of visual glitches there. Yeah, but like I said, super proud of this farm. Um, and if you guys really did like it and want to see more awesome farms like this, please, please consider subscribing. Um, I mean, it won't go unrecognized. Uh, but it's, it, I don't know, it's something that, this farm is just incredible, and I mean, if you guys really do want to see more stuff like this, um, there will be tutorials for more simpler ice farms, I don't know when, like, I mean, the next video will be a tutorial for the honey farm that I actually just showcased, um, and if you guys really do want to see that, please consider subscribing, um, yeah, but that's all I have for you guys today, I'll leave you with this, uh, uh, with just this last uh, look at the farm and I'll see you later. I uh, hope you guys hope to see you guys in the next one and have a good day. Bye